Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to take a look at two very cost effective M.2 drive coolers from Thermalright. We're looking at the M2 2280 standard and also the M2 2280 Pro. Now, the difference between the two is uh, very minimal in terms of the actual design, there's not really that much difference very slight difference in the heat sink itself, but the pro version actually has a integrated eight millimeter heat pipe, which you can just about see protruding there, and you'll probably be seeing it for some B-roll, which we filmed a little bit earlier. So after this week, when I tested the Arctic M2 Pro, which uh, wasn't great, caused a little bit of damage to the fingers, so I thought I'll have a look on the market, see what else is available for a similar sort of price, and see if the performance is very similar. So in today's video, I'm gonna go through, take a very quick look at these two, then also we'll take a look at the installation methods for both of them, again, very similar between the two. Uh, there will be timestamps in the video description, so you can fast forward to whichever bit you want to see. And at the end of the video, we'll look at some performance results. And then at the very end of the video, we'll talk about which one I would recommend and if it's right for you. Also, if you are interested in picking up these, there will be links in the video description, along with the Arctic one and also various other options if we find anything. As always, those links in the video description will be affiliated, so there is a very small commission earned from any purchases you might make. It doesn't cost you anything else, but it does go a long way to helping out the channel. So let's start off with the first one. So this is the M2 2280. This is actually one of the original releases from Thermalright for M.2 coolers. It's actually quite a nice little unit. It's in a kind of um, a mild gray, mid gray, I'm not too sure what you'd call it. Not quite charcoal, but not quite silver, somewhere in between. And on the back, there is a almost reflective base plate. Inside, to get to it, two screws either side. And also you've got a bit of adjustability on there as well. So if you're using either a single-sided drive or a double-sided drive with M.2s, you can have both. So sometimes you have chips on both sides of the PCB, but this works with either. There is a little bit of adjustment in terms of height on the side. So depending on where the screws go, you can loosen them off and this will open and close a little bit, which is great. Also, something else which is really important for M.2 drive heat sinks is the fact that the length of this is actually around about 65 to 66 millimeters, whereas anything over 70 generally is going to be quite tricky to fit. So do bear that in mind. This is uh, really easy to install, very easy to use, etc., etc. The only thing I would say is looking at the heat pads, which are inside, the heat pads are actually very slim indeed. Now, they do seem to do a pretty good job, so I'll give them that. But personally, I would like to have seen the thermal pads being a little bit thicker and a little bit more spongy just so they can adapt to the different shapes of drives. Sometimes you have a controller which is a little bit higher than the RAM and vice versa. So it would have been nice to see those a little bit thicker. But again, they do a reasonable job as they are. But overall, for around about £5 here in the UK, I think this is actually a really good choice and weighs in at somewhere around about 47 grams. So next we'll take a look at the Pro version. So this is the M2 2280 Pro. And as I said earlier, this one has a built-in heat pipe. Whether or not you actually need a heat pipe in one of these things, I'm not entirely sure. If maybe there was an extension on the top and other fins, then possibly. I honestly don't think there's really much need for it. And we'll find out when we do the test later if it actually makes any difference at all. So do stick around for that. In terms of the design, very, very similar. Although this actually, even though it's got the heat pipe on there, you'd expect it to be a little bit heavier. In actual fact, this weighs in a little bit lighter. It ran about 43 to 44 grams. So a little bit lighter than the standard non-pro version. Otherwise, it's exactly the same. So you've got the screws on the side for adjustment of the height. You've also got the same thermal pads on there with the blue strips to remove the protection. And uh, yeah, overall, it's a very similar aesthetic. So. They are almost identical. The only thing different really is the price. So the pro version is around about six to seven pounds here in the UK. Again, links will be in the video description so you can check out the latest pricing. So I think we talked enough about the actual device themselves. Let's take a look and see how easy they are to actually install. So we're gonna start off with the installation of the M2 2280, the non-pro version. The installation is basically there's going to be the same across both of them. So I've already taken the screws out of the side, so that is ready to go. Uh, we should have a front and a overhead view of the camera, so it should be pretty easy for you to all see. So we're going to start off with the base section and just peel off the, uh, the blue protective coat in there from the thermal pad. And it's actually quite a thin but a very gummy pad, so be careful when you're peeling off the, uh, the blue film that it doesn't come off entirely. 
So there's one. I suppose we might as well do the top one as well. Because the uh, the heat and humidity in here it seems to have started peeling off a little bit. So do be careful with that. So we've got our two sections ready. So now we've got our drive. And the good thing about this is because the actual physical size of the drive enclosure is actually a little bit smaller than the length of the drive itself, it means you don't have to be too precise about the overhang at either end. So for the M.2 slot or for the retention mechanism. So yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, depending on how you're going to be installing this into your board, you can consider which way round it's going to go, but that's going to be more important for the top part than the, the other. And also, regardless if this is a single-sided drive, like this one is, the Crucial P2, or sorry, P3, I should say, this is a single-sided drive, so on the back side there is nothing. You can still put the uh, protective coat on there, or the thermal coat in. It's absolutely fine. So let's position our drive with a little something like that. And you should find that there's going to be more than adequate overhang at the front and also at the back. So that's going to make it easier to install, at least in theory. So with that part in place, we can then grab the top section. So again, depending how you're going to be installing it. So in theory, we're going to be put it in like that on this motherboard. So we want the, the logo ideally to be that way around, but I think they've actually suggested that you do it the other way around. So let's see if we can get it to go either way and see if it actually interferes. Um, that might be a little bit closer on that side. We'll try it anyway, just to see what happens. So you just basically put the unit on top. Um, actually, I'm going to double check to make sure it does actually fit. Yeah. Yeah, that slots in absolutely fine. So. You, it seems you can put it either way. So if you are someone who is a little bit considerate about the logos and you want them to face the right way, then it's gonna be absolutely fine. So now we do is to get our four screws and we're gonna put those back on. Now with this particular M.2 drive, there is a pronounced kind of, almost like a hump actually in the middle of the drive, which generally you don't tend to get these days. They generally tend to be quite flat. So it would have been a little bit nicer, I think on this with the thermal pad, for it to be a little bit bigger and a bit more spongy just to kind of soak up some of that height differential and no doubt as we go through and we'll do the testing very shortly we'll see if that actually has a, a positive or a negative effect on the cooling and also on the drive itself in terms of performance so we'll get our last screw in here so that is all done we've got our screws in so now we can put this onto the motherboard. So in order to do that, we're going to remove the M.2 retaining screw. Uh, you may or may not have one of these on your motherboard. You may have one of those clasps which go around. And what we're going to want to do is to get our M.2 port and line it up on a bit of an angle, push that in, and then we can put our screw down to actually retain the drive. Moment of truth, is there enough clearance? Yes, there appears to be. And there we go. There is the uh, the finished result. I think that actually looks pretty decent. Shame it's not a black version. That would have tied in a little bit better with the theme of the board. But still, very easy to install. No cut fingers, which is always a bonus. And yeah, very straightforward. But how is it going to perform? Next, we'll take a look at the M2 2280. This is the pro version with a built-in heat pipe. And uh, we'll go through the installation process. It's like I said, it's going to be basically the same as the other one. So we've got our bottom section and the top section. The only difference being this one, the heat sink is a little bit different sized. And also there is the built-in 8mm heat pipe. So we're going to remove the blue film, which again seems to want to come off due to the humidity and the warmth in here today. So that is that part ready. And then we'll do the same on this side. That one's come off a little bit easier. So with that removed, you can see the uh, the heat pipe there, slightly raised, which potentially could be a downside because there is going to be a bit which is raised, unless that really does squish down, which I don't think it will do because it's quite a thin thermal pad there. The actual outer side of it is not going to make a great deal of contact with the drive at all. But still, let's give it a go, see what goes on. So we've got our P3 drive. 
And again, we've got loads of room here, so we can have a little bit of overhang on both ends to make life easier for us when it comes to installing. So hopefully from that angle, you can see it a little bit better. So tons of overhang on this end and also on that end also. So we can just now put this on the top. Now again, if you want the logos to be around the right way, you can turn this around either way. It doesn't make a great deal of difference. So we'll just put that on the top there and line that up with the holes. And I think that is pretty much it. And still we've got clearance. They do suggest, like I said earlier, they do suggest that you actually have this end at the other end and have the pointed end towards the front. But it does appear that you can actually mount it either way. It doesn't seem to make a great deal of difference. So with that done, we can now get our four screws and put those back in just to keep it secure. And also whilst doing it, you should apply a little bit of pressure kind of towards the center of the drive itself just to make sure that it is actually touching the thermal pads. Again, due to the nature of the thermal pads being as thin as they are, even though they do appear to be good quality ones, due to that thinness on some drives, especially if you've got a drive which has a slightly more pronounced hump at some port or other, then yeah, potentially you might find that the controller is getting cooled, but the actual RAM itself isn't. So. We'll see what the performance is like, see what the transfer speeds are like, and see if uh, any of that makes any difference whatsoever, or whether or not just the fact that there is a uh, significant chunk of metal on the controller or the drive itself, it'll dissipate enough heat to, uh, to do the job. So there we go, that is the, the drive in case there. So now let's install it into our motherboard. So again, this is going to be pretty much the same deal as the other time, just a slightly different angle. So our M.2 fingers into the port there, just raised up on a slight angle, let it go, and it will drop down anyway, because there is a little bit of weight there. Around about 45 grams, I think it was. And then we'll put our M.2 screw in, and there is the drive in place. That really is very simple installation. And again, like I said, it does look quite nice. Some of these fins on there actually being raised will allow a little bit more air circulation. So there we go, that is the Pro version installed. So now let's take a look at the results and see if it actually does what it's supposed to do. So you've seen how they install, very easy indeed. And I've got to say, these are a breath of fresh air when it comes to installing M.2 heat sinks, especially after the last video. If you haven't seen that video yet, I would strongly suggest you check it out for the Arctic M2 Pro. Uh, yeah, that was a, a catastrophe in the making. So I'll link that in the video description so you can check it out. But what we should talk about is the actual performance on these. So in terms of the actual rule numbers, what we've got is we've got a bare drive, which is installed in our B650 Edge Wi-Fi behind us, and just done a very simple test on it, transferring some files. So we've got five results in total. We've got the bare drive, we've got the one with the included MSI heatsink, which actually, to be fair, is a PCIe Gen 5 heatsink, so it is a little bit more bulky and is considerably more heavy at closer to 70 or 80 grams. And also there is a built-in backplate on the motherboard, which when you use the stock heatsink, and that does bulk it out then to around about 100 grams of heatsink. So it is a considerable difference, basically double what these are. But if you don't have a heatsink on your motherboard and you wanna add one, which is probably why you're watching this, is it actually a good idea? So like I said, got the bare drive, the MSI included one. We've also thrown in the Arctic M2 Pro as a reference because even though it was a pain in the ass to fit, it actually did perform quite well. And obviously we've got the 2280 and the 2280 Pro. So let's take a look at the figures. So the bare drive idling around about 57 degrees Celsius and under a full load got up to 81 degrees Celsius. The MSI M2 Gen 5 stock heatsink built into the motherboard, idle temperature 38 degrees Celsius and highs of 53 degrees Celsius, which was excellent. Then we've got the Arctic M2 Pro, 39 degrees Celsius was the idle temperature and the low temperature went up to 58 degrees Celsius. When it comes to the Thermalright M2 2280, the non-pro version, we had an idle temperature of 36 degrees Celsius, which because I think the room is a little bit cooler today than what it was previously, but that shouldn't affect our low temperatures dramatically. And in fact, it has actually come out slightly worse at 59 degrees Celsius for the M2 2280. 
but taking a look at the one with the built-in heat pipe where you'd expect it to be a little bit better, we had exactly the same idle temperatures at 36 degrees Celsius and the highest recorded temperature was a little bit higher at 60 degrees Celsius. So actually of all of them, technically the worst one on show other than having a bare drive. So definitely I would say as a recommendation, if you're looking into these and thinking which one should I get, I would say for the sake of the extra three or four pounds, the one with the heat pipe on it probably isn't worth it. Again, down to individual, if you like the look of it with that kind of spear tip kind of design on it, then obviously go for it for the sake of the money. It's, it's not a huge deal. But I think for this one, it ran about five pounds or less. The Thermalright M2 2280 is probably a really good way to go. It's very easy to install, does a pretty decent job. And also I think it actually looks quite nice as well when it's installed as well. It blends in quite nicely with the rest of the aesthetic. But again, that's gonna be down to your individual setup. If you've got like a white motherboard or a real blacked out theme, then this may not fit quite as well. But I think being gray is relatively neutral. And a lot of boards these days have a mixture of kind of black, silver, gray, and white. So yeah, should fit in with most builds. Anyway, there's my thoughts on it. Let me know what you think about it in the comments section below. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, smash that like button. If you want to see more content of like this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting subscribe and the chime notification. That way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews Now too, And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.